the Pandagara. What is it? Where does it come from? And how do you keep it in a glass box? Well, the Pandagara, scientifically known as Gara Philoptera, is a relative newcomer to the hobby. It hasn't been around for a long time, uh, but it's becoming increasingly more and more available, and, and you can find it without really trying too hard. Anyways, what is it? Well, let's take a look. So this guy, Dr. Sven Coolander, and this other guy here in the middle, uh, Dr. Ralph Britz. Back in 1998, they decided to go to this country called Myanmar, which is the old Burma. It's kind of uh, on the, the one side of it, it's got a huge mountain range called the uh, Rakhine, 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 I don't know how to pronounce it. Anyways, these mountains. Now, I don't know about you, but the last place I would go to look for the next great aquarium fish is a mountain range. But anyways, these guys were obviously smarter than I am because they brought back seven different species of what we now know as Gara. Uh, only two of which uh, actually made an impact in the hobby, that I know of anyways. Uh, but none of these fish got described until 2004. So as you can see, they haven't been around for a really long time. Of the two species that you're going to encounter the most, anyways, in the aquarium hobby, uh, Gara Philoptera is the one by far you're most likely to come across. Uh, its popularity is tenfold, but you may also see uh, a species called Gara Rufa. <clears throat> and and I, I have to say, keep your eyes open because even in my local fish shop, they had Gara Rufa labeled as Pandagara. And so just keep your eyes open because sometimes you will see a little misidentification between the two. But you're definitely most likely to come across Gara Philoptera. All right, so now that I bored you guys to death, you probably want to know how in the heck do you keep these in a fish tank? If you do a simple Google search for Pandagara, uh, you'll come across an article by Practical Fish Keeping uh, that is an interview with Dr. Coolander himself, the guy that actually discovered the fish. And uh, it, it's a really good read. I recommend it. And uh, there's a story in the, in the article that tells that he was really having trouble trying to catch these fish in the river. They saw them, they knew they were there, but every time they tried to catch them, they just run off into the rocks and, you know, they were almost impossible to catch. But they were there during the dry season, and during the monsoons, the rivers flood, but then during the dry season, the water recedes, and low-lying areas that are near the river that are in the floodplain tend to get separated from the river, and they, they tend to, uh, they're not stagnant stagnant but there's there's no flow going on and uh, generally there's like leaf litter or stuff on the bottom or you know stuff collects they have softer bottoms and uh, they were able to use their nets and catch those fish in these pools that didn't have any flow the only reason I bring that up is just to show the fact that this is one heck of an adaptable fish uh, it, it, it can take a lot of different types of conditions and still do just fine. So as you're doing your Google search, you'll see that the recommended parameters, you know, depending on what website you're going to go to, you're going to see a pH around neutral somewhere in there, 6.5 to 7.5, you know, just to throw a number out there, but, you know, somewhere near neutral. And they, they have a recommended hardness of soft to medium, you know. I, I haven't seen anything that recommended hard water. Uh, and a temperature range, say, 72 to 80, somewhere around in there. Uh, but I have to say that 
I have extremely hard water with an extremely high pH and this is one adaptable fish. Uh, you can see they're showing no ill effects at all. Now will they breed in, in my setup with the hard water and high pH? Probably not. Uh, but you know if I actually wanted to make an effort, mine are still juvenile yet, they, they got a lot of growing to do. But you know I could probably fix that with an influx of RO water but you know this fish is used to being in changing conditions all the time so if, if you can't meet an exact neutral pH don't panic the, the fish will be just fine as far as food goes you can take one look at this fish and I mean you instantly know that it's an algae eater I mean you can't mistake it um, they Every website I've ever looked at does recommend a, a uh, high amount of algae in their diet. But I'll tell you what, from my own experience, this fish also eats quite a bit of protein. Um, <clears throat> they have an excellent sense of smell, and right after feedings, they'll be going along the bottom of your tank looking for any uneaten chunks of food. And I guarantee you, if you take a portion of freeze-dried tubaflex worms and stick it to the front of your glass up high, within 30 seconds, there'll be at least one pandagara there chowing down. And within a minute, all of them will be up there fighting for it. So they definitely don't have any problems with eating protein, but uh, it is definitely recommended that you give them a high algae content as well. And if you look at this tank you can see I pretty much got that covered uh, they spend an awful lot of time gra uh, grazing that algae on the wood so yeah they are extremely easy to feed uh, I don't see any reason why they wouldn't take any just algae wafers and things that people feed their other like plecos and stuff like that I did forget to mention under their tank parameters that uh, everybody recommends a high oxygen content uh, with these guys so if you're keeping them at a warmer temp you know you might want to add an air stone uh, if you're using co2 make sure that doggone thing gets turned off at night uh, that's the only thing they don't tolerate is low oxygen levels and if we start talking about how this fish behaves, you can kind of see why. Uh, this is a very active fish. It's out during the day, so it's kind of nice to have a have a fish, an algae eater, that's actually out. You know, when the lights are on, and uh, you get to see them quite a bit. They're moving around, doing their thing. So they're they're a lot of fun to watch. When it comes to their aggression. I, I have yet to find a fish that, or a different species of fish that the Pandagara even recognizes is there. They, they don't care. I've kept them with Cory's, uh, no issues. Uh, in this tank you're looking at right now, there's also Autosynclus. And Autosynclus and Pandagaras kind of feed the same, you know, so they're kind of feeding in the same areas, feeding on the same thing. And the Pandagaras could care less. They, they don't even recognize that there's another fish competing for food, the same food, in the same tank. They just, they don't care. Now, when we start talking about conspecific aggression, in other words how they react with each other uh, these fish are definitely social with each other some good some bad um, almost cichlid like to to an extent um, these fish will establish a social order uh, if if you want to keep this fish and you don't want to keep a group of them do not buy a pair uh, you can see here here's two of them disputing a perch on a sponge filter 
Now, most often, these interactions or little scuffles don't amount to much. But if you only buy two of these, uh, one of them is going to get stressed to the point where it, it's going to start affecting his health. They don't seem to do a lot of damage, you know, in these little territorial disputes. But, uh, you know, overall stress on the fish could, you know, lead to other problems. Um, it's always a good idea to have enough, enough stuff in your tank to divide up line of sight. It kind of seems like once one chases another one away, uh, once it's out of sight, the, the fish forgets, oh, I was in a fight. I don't remember, you know, and he goes about his business. All right, I think I bored you guys enough. Uh, we'll give a quick recap in case you just skip to the end, which kind of I like to do. Uh, this fish is highly adaptable. Uh, it, it can be kept in anything but extreme conditions. Uh, the, the thing to really make sure is is that you got a lot of uh, oxygen in the water and either keep them in a group or just keep one. Don't keep two, don't even keep three. Keep a group or just a single specimen. Uh, do that and you'll find that these fish are a lot of fun, man. They're really fun to watch. Uh, when they perch up on things, they, they can move their eyes. Their eyes are uh, real movable and they can even blink. So they're definitely always aware of their surroundings. And uh, enjoy the fish, man. They're a lot of fun. Uh, this is definitely one of my favorite algae eaters. Uh, Till next time, have a good day. Bye.